All right, guys, just got to Vortec Watch in Fort Collins, and we're gonna go inside and get a quick tour with RT. Let's check it out. Hey, Rob. Welcome. RT, how's it going? It's good, how are you? Welcome to Vortec. All right, let's do this. All right, come on in. So I, I usually start our tours with just a brief description of what we do. So we take antique American pocket watches that were made about a hundred years ago and we use just the insides. So the dial hands and movement, that's an original antique pocket watch movement there. And we turn them into Vortec watches. We call it the American Artisan Series. But we make case, crown, hardware, and we turn that old pocket watch into a one-of-a-kind wristwatch right here in the building. And the thing that a lot of people don't know is that over 100 million pocket watches were made in USA between about 1850 and 1950. And I use this map to tell that story. I call it the map of the great American watch companies. But I, You showed me this map when, uh, was it Chicago or New York? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Yep. And I just thought this was the coolest thing. Yeah, yeah, so um, it, for me, uh, just as a, a history nerd, like I just love learning about the background of each company, especially like the business history of it. A lot of people recognize, you know, Hamilton, maybe some people recognize Ball or Waltham or Elgin, they were the big ones. But there was 10 of these companies, and technically there was more, but 10 of the companies made, I mean, millions of pocket watches. And across all of them, it was over 100 million pocket watches. Well, I mean, market. just like today, you have the big brands, they make Correct. millions of watches. And then mm -hmm. you have the small brands that still exist in that market, but not everybody knows about them. The same thing probably happened then. Totally. And so we buy out estate auctions and we save the pocket watches from being scrapped. Sometimes we get the cases, but when we do, it's like this. It's a nickel case or a steel case. It's not valuable. A lot of pocket watches were in solid gold or silver cases, and so we just get the guts. And this is how we get them. You know, sometimes they're bagged up like this. Sometimes they're like, you know, over here where they're just sitting in a drawer um, or over there. We just have like loose dials everywhere. Um, and then this is what my trade show display typically looks like. And I, I honestly just use these to showcase how every single watch is truly one of a kind. But... Let me show you how we make them. You guys are in for a treat. I already did a quick tour of this, this whole facility and it's uh, kind of mind blowing. Oh, hold on. Quick peek behind the scenes. This is like their studio room, pretty cool. <laughs> So when I, when I start tours, I start with, you know, this uh, poster here. This is a vintage poster originally uh, published by Hamilton, um, the original Hamilton Watch Company in Pennsylvania. And it's how a watch works, but I start with, you know, jewels and springs and gears and just like making sure everyone understands like, this is an antique pocket watch. It's manually wound. There are no batteries. This was made and invented before electricity. <laughs> um, and then I, I talk about the history of, especially the, we call them the big three, or Elgin, Waltham, and Illinois. Um, those three companies made, I mean, half of the total production of pocket watches. And then I come over here and, and I talk about just how, this is how we get them. Most of the time we don't get the case because it's gold or silver. And then this is all the parts and pieces that go into an antique pocket watch movement. And so, you know, you have all of those gears and uh, different components that have to be taken apart, cleaned, oiled, adjusted, and restored and put back together before we can build the wristwatch. We have two watchmakers in here today. Uh, Derek and Kent are in here. Uh, and we do some of that restoration here in the building and we leverage other contract watchmakers around the country to help us keep up with the demand. But once they build the watch or restore the pocket watch and then build the wristwatch, then they get put on these testing machines here and we run them through multiple days of testing in all positions. Pocket watches were designed to keep time in your pocket, but now we're making huh. wristwatches. Solid so we, point. We have to make sure that they keep time when they're sideways, when they're on their 
you know, face, swing their upside down. And so these machines were made to wind watches, but we actually use them for testing. And we wind everything manually every morning, put them on these machines, and then start the testing process. And then this display here shows what we actually make. So we're making, we source the strap, and we source the glass, and we source the, the gaskets. But we're manufacturing the buckle, the screws, what we call the band bars, or how we hold it on your wrist, the metal case, the crown, the case back, all the metal components on the outside of the watch we make here in this um, building, and I'll show you how we make them. And then we make all the internal components here. This one right here, that little one that looks like a little cone, um, that's called the sleeve. And the stem and sleeve, basically how you set and wind a pocket watch, were built into the pocket watch case originally. Yeah. And making this nice click. Oh, Getting that nice click and that strong <laughs> click was actually one of the hardest things for us to, to yeah. reverse engineer and design. So um, we do the actual building of watches in this room. We'll have the restoration, but that is our, our clean room. And I'll show you the next step. So in this room, multi-purpose room, we have our sandblaster over here where we can get different uh, finishes on the cases, basically matte finishes on steel and things like that. When we make a bronze case like this, we'll sandblast the case so that it patinas evenly. This is sandblasted steel for the crown. And so it, it gives that, it takes all the burrs off and also makes something slightly less shiny. So we sandblast a lot of our components. Um, the machine over here, the blue epilogue laser right here is where we cut the foam for the inside of our boxes. And so this foam is all cut right here on this machine. And that way we can get our nice brand. So funny, inside. us consumers take this stuff for granted. Like this is, it seems like overkill to accomplish this. But when we get these products and we spend our hard-earned money on it, we like to see this. Like you could have easily not have done this. But, well, you, but you did it, and it's cool. Yeah, and, you know, we, we, we buy these uh, cases from Otterbox. They're another uh, Fort Collins, Colorado company. So they actually hand deliver these coming over in a box from, from Otter. Um, and I'm sure they could make us these things at scale, but we have lots of different sizes of watches, and we have lots of different, you know, things that we want to send customers. And so having the mass customizability of, of these, um, you know, laser engravers and to make that foam ourselves just right. gives us a you lot guys of control it exactly uh, control in, in a lot of ways including uh, scale and quality this laser engraver it's called foba it's basically a similar process but at a much smaller scale and we'll do our best to show you how it works but that's what we're doing on the back of the watch so we can engrave made in colorado usa you know vortic watch company the springfield all of this stuff on the back of the watch is engraved on this one right here we can also one of the watches we made earlier this one wasn't quite perfect but we can put logos and things like that on the end of the crown oh, slick. so we're doing cool stuff on that machine as far as laser engraving and then this, this is, I mean, I'm an engineer, so this is my favorite part. This is our machine shop. So, everything that goes into the case and the crown and all of our metal components starts with billet, which means that we take a bar of steel or a chunk of steel or bronze and we turn it into all the, the case components right here in this, in this workshop. We have six machines here. We have three horizontal machines means that the bar of steel is fed into the machine from left to right, and then the machine will cut it away. These are all lathes, and these make small round components. I'll show you what they make. Over there, we make the other bigger parts. But it all starts with, you know, a bar of steel or bronze like this, and then we can make crowns. We can make our, our sleeves like we talked about. Let me see, just for scale, we'll grab this. So that is our sleeve, and that's what makes the little clicking sound. So it's threaded on one side, and if I can flip it over, 
very hard to flip over. That's a cone on the other side. So um, these sleeves sit inside the crown and that's how we make everything set and wind. We also make the stem. So this is an engineering drawing of the stem for our military edition. And that's the stem that sits between the crown and the movement. And that's how you set and wind the watch. And this is all drawn in millimeters. And so we're cutting things to 0.82 millimeters and 1.27 millimeters. It all has to be perfect so that it functions with the movement. So crowns, sleeves, stems, all made here. We also make the band bar. And instead of spring bars on Vortec watches, we use this nice, big, sturdy bar cut from a solid block so that you know your watch is never gonna come off your wrist. That sits in there with a screw. That's how we hold it on. We also make the tang of the buckle on these machines because these horizontal machines focus on making small round things. So that's your tang for your buckle right there. And a numerous, you know, amount of, of other components, but you know, again, as, as an engineer, I like looking at the drawings and saying, okay, this is the case tube. So this sits inside the, it gets mounted into the case and sits inside the crown. And we need those slots right there for the O-rings to keep it water resistant. So that's what we're making on these machines. Let's look inside the machine so you can kind of see how it works. And then we'll get some video of, of it being on for you. But the bar of steel or bronze comes out right here, fed out by the machine. And this is spinning really fast. And then all of these are tools to cut away the material. We can drill with something like this. We can make slots with some something like these cutting tools. And then obviously some tools are bigger than others so we can take off more material. But all of those tools can come in and cut away um, at any given time. I think there was a joke there somewhere too. I'm sure. <laughs> cases so we start with something like that and this is halfway through right we can make the, the case and then it gets flipped over and we'll make the other side and finish a watch case this is our it's pretty wild how thin you guys make the, the side of the case yep and that's so this is our military case so that's what's on my wrist today is actually our bronze right so that's how we make that right there and we can also make buckles. So the rest of the buckle, I showed you the tang, but that's the rest of the buckle there. And we can make a bunch of buckles at one time. And that's just a little more efficient method of making buckles. And then obviously we still have to make the bezel and the back, case back. And those all start with different sizes of what we call billet or pieces of steel and bronze like this. And I'll show you the machine that makes it. So this is a CNC machine, and what that's doing, that's an end mill back there on the right, and it's coming in and just cutting away at the, the part, and right now it's making the underside of the watch. So, so we're starting in the front right with something like this. And then when it's back in the back right there, now it's cutting away the inside of that case. And that's what it's currently working on is the case is flipped over and it's cutting the underside of it. Right, and there's, a, there's quite a few of them on there. Yep, so it starts there in the front like this and it does the first operation and then we flip it over on the, on the front left and it does the second operation and then we flip it and now it's gonna cut in the front middle, it's gonna cut those uh, two holes in the lugs. We have to cut this when we flip it over. And then in the back, it finishes uh, from the back side of the watch. How long start to finish from the blank to the the almost usable case? Yep, so we're making basically five cases at a time right now. Okay. And it takes uh, about eight to 10 hours to run through this whole wow. program. Um, so, you know, technically we're making a, a couple of cases a day, but we're doing it in small batches, so it's really efficient and we have multiple pallets. So that's one pallet it's working on on the left. We can do the whole thing again on the other pallet over here on the right. And then we can turn this thing on right when we get here in the morning, you know, run all day. And then we can 
uh, cycle everything through and run it again and it'll run all night again. So we can be 24 seven making watches. And that's how we make all these parts. And this, I like this, just showing this up. So when you start with a big piece of metal like this, you need a huge tool like this to come in and cut it. And tools like this is how we do the first part. And then the tools get a lot smaller as you go. And then get down to something like that, where you can barely see the end of that tool. I'll try to hold my finger behind it so you can see it. And the machine changes the those, like you load it, concept. but they change it automatically. Correct, yep. Right, like you can see all the different exactly, bits loaded yeah. up. Back there on the left, you can see that. And then you get case backs and cases. These are bronze, our next military edition coming in for this November. And that's our tour, that's Warchick Watch Company, and that's how we make watches right here in Colorado. Thanks, RT, appreciate it. Thanks, Rob.